They ascribed to the King of Kings, the ruler of the nations. Someone tell him thank you. Thank you for 2023. Thank you for open doors. Thank you for your mighty hand upon our lives, upon our families. Is someone grateful enough? Thank you. 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 Lord, we praise you. We honor you. You are king. You are God. Even among the nation. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. We honor you as individuals and we honor you as a global family. You are the doer of every wonder that we have experienced in this ministry. And we return all the glory. Thank you for 2023. You have spoken. We have received. And Jesus, we open up our hearts for a performance of your word. Bless our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And you turn to someone by your left and right and tell them, is your year of open doors. Did you add S to the doors? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lay your hands on your head and please declare in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Every prophetic word that has been declared and is meant for my destiny must be made manifest in my life lift your voice and please pray lift your voice and please pray lift your voice and please pray Every prophetic word this year I will not be a spectator I place a demand by faith with understanding for in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray four things that the Lord put in my heart in the place of prayer to just encourage us number one is that you must make a decision to love Jesus this year like never before. Let me tell you the truth, it pays to love Jesus. Not only to serve him, it pays to love Jesus. And I believe that this is one year when God will show clearly the value of loving him. Hallelujah. If it is true that the church, which includes you, is the bride of Christ, then he is about to demonstrate practically that he is a responsible father, husband, and savior. Are we together? It pays to love Jesus. The Bible says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man what God has in store, not just for them that pray to him, not just to them that come to church, but to them that love him. There is a realm beyond the realm of Bible study. There is a realm beyond the realm of prayer and fasting. This is a realm for those who are passionately in love with Jesus. Notice I didn't say God because God means many things. But we are talking about Jesus, the very son of the living God. You must make up your mind, let it be a powerful decision and a resolution by the spirit that like never before, you will love Jesus. You see, for who he is and it extends to serving him in truth. Number two, you must be committed this year, 2023, to prayer, to the word, and to fellowship. This came very strongly in my spirit. Please write it down. You must be committed like never before to prayer, to the word, and to fellowship. You have been taught extensively, and there are many, many teachings lined up for this year 
that are meant to encourage and build us on this wise you must be committed to prayer committed to prayer committed to prayer Luke 18 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray first Thessalonians 5 17 he says to pray without season James 5 13 is anyone afflicted he said let him pray Mark 11 24 he says and what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them hallelujah prayer is very very powerful then the ministry of the word acts chapter 6 and verse 4 it says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified john 1 and verse 3 he says and without him was not anything made that was made all things were made by the word so you must commit yourself to the ministry of the word and then of course fellowship it says to neglect not the gathering of believers as the manner of some is psalm 133 behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron to his bed to his cat and then it says there god had commanded the blessing even life forevermore i have taught you that there are certain spiritual blessings that you can never receive in your secret place it was meant to be distributed in the company of god's people are we together no matter how yielded you are there are dimensions in the spirit that you cannot touch just by your personal press it will take the corporate presence of god's people together it says where two or three are gathered in my name i am there in their midst the apostles understood this and after their personal exploits they will return back to their company are we together so you must be committed to a life of prayer committed to the word and to fellowship acts 2 42 it says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer as a result 43 it says that fear came upon every soul and that many wonders and signs were done by the apostles so we must commit ourselves to prayer the word and fellowship number three the third resolution that you must make this year by the spirit is that you must be determined to make notable progress in and with your life this is a powerful one this came to me strong in the place of prayer you must be determined to make notable progress in and with your life this is the year when you must refrain from marking time and insist that there must be constructive progress in my life if you believe that already shout a loud amen, amen. notable progress in exodus chapter 14 from verse 14 um, when moses was leading the people from egypt you know crossing the the red sea he calmed them down and then he went to the lord and was crying and the lord said why are you speaking to me verse 15 he went to the lord and he says speak to the children of israel that they go forward you have a mandate as a shepherd over them to insist that there is no stagnation even if a red sea is before you it is not an excuse to remain this is in god's mind in god's mind there should be no reason whatsoever for the absence of progress not pharaoh behind you not the red sea before you he didn't say go and explain to them he said the red sea is not the issue tell the people have it as a mentality that you must go forward regardless what is in front of you you must make up your mind nigeria cannot be the reason election cannot be the reason 
No, the economy of nations cannot be the reason. The onslaught of darkness cannot be the reason. Did the Bible not say, he that cometh from above is above all? Listen, if you do not have a victor's mentality, already you are defeated from January. You must make up your mind. How will a man go to tell God, very accountable leader, he stands before God and says, there is a Red Sea, what should I tell them? And God does not say, tell them to examine the Red Sea. He says, tell them that they go forward. Prophesy to yourself, say, go forward. One more time, say it again, go forward. Let the realm of the spirit hear you prophesy, go forward. He didn't say go around. Going around is not going forward. No. In fact, going around is proof of madness. When you see people, they call mad people wanderers. When your steps have to be constructive and ever increasing to be called forward. Just because there is motion does not mean it is advancement. I didn't say move around. Go forward. Go forward means the next step must be ahead of the last one. That means you should not move forward in April then by, no, go forward. Prophesy again, say go forward. You must be determined to go forward. That means if this prophecy is true for you, your least month should be January. It should never be that February, March, april you turn back and begin to wish for january for my bible says the path of the just is that in your bible that it is as a shining light that shineth more and more say more and more to your destiny say more and more so please sit number one love jesus like never before number two be committed to prayer to the word and fellowship corporate fellowship number three be determined to make notable progress in and with your life there are many of you here who are ordained to be global god has placed an anointing upon you in every area but you have allowed mediocrity to sit upon your destiny giving flimsy excuses this is the year that god is once again opening a door for you yeah. number four are you ready the fourth charge that i'm giving is that you must make up your mind that this year your life will be a blessing make up your mind never assume that you are a blessing it is those you bless that will tell you if you are a blessing or not you cannot assume that you are a blessing there is no being a blessing without a witness no it is impossible to say you are a blessing without pointing who and what you blessed when God blessed man, the first example of blessing, there was the blesser, God, and was the object of the blessing. And there was proof of the blessing. So it's impossible to say you are a blessing and yet not have people testify that indeed you are a blessing. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. I like that word. In thee, he says, shall all the families of the earth be be blessed in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed this should not be the year where you sit down and wait in self-sympathy for people to keep blessing you it is time for someone to thank god you are alive there are many of you nobody prays for you except they are asked to intercede corporately your life has not made any impact that deserves someone waking up to say lord keep him for our sake you must change that narrative today hallelujah Pray for me, pray for me. It's a mediocre approach to life. You must be so valuable and so much of a blessing that someone will gladly leave sleep alone and rise up and intercede for you and say, Lord, for my sake, this is the reason why I eat bread in the morning. This person is such a blessing to me. This is the reason why my children go to school. Keep him alive for my sake. There was a woman who died in the Bible 
and the people refused they said no way they came and showed the apostle look what she has done testaments of her usefulness you must make up your mind to be a blessing waiting for a preacher to be a blessing is failure already waiting to be rich in quotes to be a blessing is failure already because most people believe that the only thing you give men is money that is a big mistake I have taught you about inheritance if you don't have money transfer your mindset that is a potent gift greater than money hallelujah the Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many how many many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever he called an idol worshiper called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans and then in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 down to 3 he said come out of your country your kindred your father's house unto a land that I will show you and if you walk in keeping with my dictates here are blessings that I'm keeping for you that I will make you a great nation now he's speaking to a man without a child I hope you understand that I will bless thee please keep that scripture I will make your name great we have a teaching on this already but let me just give you a little teaser if you you may want to refer to my message redefining inheritance I teach there on five things that the Bible calls inheritance one of it is a good name the Bible says a good name is to be desired more than money you are great but if your name is not great there is no succession the possibility of succession is that you invest your goodness in your name so that when you are not there people can still use your name that's why Jesus gave us his name not just his life we have his life but he still gave us his name there are many people who are great but their names are not great this is an encouragement probably to a parent already don't die with greatness leave a great name names don't die I told you at the end of your life your name can be a padlock or a key it can lock people's destinies or it can be the reason why destinies are open you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that our hearts so I don't know anybody who names his child Jezebel we don't even care what the meaning is there are a few people maybe who named their children Judas I don't know anybody who has named his child Lucifer those are names very beautiful sounding names but they were associated with all kinds of wickedness when you name your child lucifer that child's life can be ruined to names are so powerful that when people had an encounter with god he himself changed their names on account of names an angel shut the mouth of a prophet till he agreed with god names are powerful are we together your name is a capture of your reputation your credibility that when people say the name of Jesus something happens in the realm of the spirit because all authority were invested in that name is someone learning so make up your mind this year that you will be a blessing that someone who was not going to get a job after all just because he per adventure mentions your name they say what did he say this pastor you know him you're related to him I wouldn't have given you the job is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake what will Mephibosheth be doing at the table but for Jonathan's sake in the name of Jesus may your name open doors for people I say it to you prophetically this is the year that God is investing grace even upon your name. 
as a parent, as a leader, your name also means the name of your organization. Your name also means the name of your business. Everything that has wrapped shame and reproach around your name, do not allow dignity and honor to follow the speakings of your name. Let it be rolled like a curtain in the name of Jesus. Have you been blessed already? This means there has to be a lot of maturity and definiteness to your pursuit of the word. Please look up. A believer, among the many things that, that, that measure the maturity of the believer is stability and consistency as far as the pursuit of the word is concerned. At this point of your experience, if you are really serious with God, there should be no fantasizing and cajoling you to be serious with God. You shouldn't be cajoled to come to the house of God. You shouldn't be cajoled to be serious about the things of God. There must be a level of maturity where you win yourself away from certain things. He says that when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. But now that I am a man, he says, I lay aside these childish things. We must attain and press onto maturity. For the Bible says, Galatians chapter 4, it says, An heir, for as long as he is a child, it says that he differed nothing from a servant, even though he be Lord of all. Hallelujah. Your coming to the house of God should not be something you are reminded about again. It should, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And for people who come to the house of the Lord and they are very casual, careless, just sitting around, looking around and not paying attention. Remember the man at Gates Beautiful? When the apostle said, look on us, the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive. You can look expecting to receive. It says they look unto him and their faces were lightened. When you look unto him, for sure you will receive. Hallelujah. So welcome as for me I have made up my mind afresh again that in the name of Jesus everyone that God has trusted to me by reason of leadership and this ministry will continue to rise and grow until the least among us becomes as great as David and that only happens by the word God is not a herbalist he's not a magician there there are, there is no other way for attaining unto maturity in the spirit outside of the ministry of the word the ministry of prayer the ministry of fellowship the ministry of the spirit anything outside of these will only lead you to superstition and deception these are patterns if you want to see the glory of the Lord revealed in your life these are the things you must do Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 this is what the Lord commanded Moses he said that the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you the glory appears unto the doer not the one who is watching this is the thing that the Lord commands. Let's just pray in one minute over these admonishments. Obtain grace from God. Go ahead and pray someone. Father, I obtain grace to love Jesus like never before. Please pray. I obtain grace. I obtain grace to be committed to a life of prayer, a life of the word, and a life of corporate fellowship. Corporate fellowship. Someone is praying. I make a determination to make notable progress in and with my life. In and with my life. Someone is praying in and with my life. And I make a commitment that this year, 2023, my life will be a blessing. A blessing to nations that people will glorify God in me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord.
prayer of faith after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again, that I might be justified. Right now, I believe I'm forgiven, I'm justified, I'm saved, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Mm -hmm.